the service staff, of course, has been booted out of their offices and new ones replaced. Uh, how do you, of course, uh, respond to this uh, move by the president, Ahmed Bola Tinebu? Hmm. Uh, a lot of people might applaud him, but personally, I won't because I'm still looking at what he represents, what his government is going to look like if actually they will not be stopped halfway by the courts. But that notwithstanding, uh, he, he, for now, I think he's still within his powers to make those kind of changes and uh, um, appoint whoever he feels that he can work with. Okay, it's within his power, in as much as uh, we await, of course, the final decision of the presidential election petition tribunal. Well, uh, from the appointment, do you see it as something commendable? Uh, is there any sense of balance and uh, in this uh, recent appointment of service chiefs? Yeah, it's been knocks and kudos anyway. Um, the reactions will start coming. But from what, from what I've been able to gather so far, I think to an extent, um, some people are trying to commend him why some people are also um, asking questions on how some of these names he, he tendered or appointed came to become uh, climb that position in just uh, in no distance time. But that is anyway, uh, it has the constitutional backing to do that. Um, let's see what will come out of it anyway. Uh, we have seen uh, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, customs being headed by a Sautana. Uh, at least for a very long time now, that position has been the reserved of the Nautanas. Um, that one alone, I think, uh, that's where I can only say, um, I think he was able to um, uh, dismantle some certain things and, uh, you know, allow fresh breath in that regard. Uh, it's okay for me. Yeah, it has been, uh, it appears to be uh, the, uh, the patent rights of the North to man the control general, but now uh, there is a paradigm shift uh, from the normal, of course, uh, uh, ways of uh, perception. And now the IG of police is from Southwest, the chief of army staff is from Southwest, and uh, the naval chief, of course, is from Enugu State. Do you think that Ibos might feel some sense of uh, belonging? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We might not be able to know actually what played out, you know, in between. Who are these people? What are their pedigree? You know, um, are you, like in some quarter, it's been speculated that some of these people has been there on the ground, behind the scene, you know, um, working or representing uh, the Jagaban's interest. You understand? In so many ways, which ordinary Nigerians might not be able to see. You understand? But we that have been in that field for so long, you know, we understand the work whether this thing is by merit or is purely a political appointment, you understand? But whichever way you look at it, I understand and believe that the man is just exercising his constitutional powers, you know. Um, on the area of um, uh, having, I think most of them there we are seeing that they are uh, southwesterners. It's okay for him if you feel that he's comfortable with that. With them. Let's see what will happen in the nearest uh, future. The appointment just took place and uh, Nigerians are watching developments. Likewise, um, the international community, especially with mighty and heartbreaking revelations that have been taking place at the tribunal. Yesterday, it was gathered that um, from the election petition tribunal, the Amazon engineer came to witness, testify in favor of P2B that there was no uh, technical glitches on that day and uh, whatever happens may have been uh, an internal arrangement uh, with the INEC. Would this be a, uh, a win advantage uh, for the Labour Party and P2B? Of course it is, but let me point out something very clearly. 
so that maybe if um, people will understand the direction this thing are actually going. Um, Tinubu advisors, I think they are acting very smart in the sense that they know how to, you know, um, uh, get attention of their fellow sympathizers and of course some Nigerians who have seen his uh, moves, you know, and the handwriting on the wall, uh, the handwriting on the wall with the way he has been able to uh, do some certain appointments, you know, um, pass sign some things into bill and all that, just to, you know, um, uh, play that game as if he actually, you know, um, in charge or he knows what he's doing. For me, um, when I look at what is happening at the uh, presidential uh, 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 tribunal, you know, as regards the election, I feel very, very bad for um, Nigerians and, of course, that uh, institution called INEC. By now, I think. Uh, what, what is it called? Yakubu Mahmoud should be cooling off either in the custody of DSS or something. You know, the the reality on ground is very clear. In, in fact, this guy compromised the the electoral process. He also sold the mandates given to Nigerians to the winged, you know, and uh, it's not acceptable. Look at what is happening. How can I neg somebody that you, you are the one that gave that contract to um, uh, those uh, engineers to monitor the uh, IRF and beavers and all that? And you are coming back to say that there were glitches. And the people who monitored it themselves mm. are telling you that there was nothing like that. Look at the blood res result sheets that they brought, which they used to, you know, um, what is actually happening, you know? So, like I said before, and I'll keep on saying it, the judges, the judiciary, the judicial system, this is a crossroad for both for them now. now Everybody is watching, Nigerians are watching. If they misfire, there will be consequences. There's no two ways about it. Yes, I think uh, they are aware of that. And uh, as uh, the presiding judge uh, reprimanded INEC uh, by what he uh, called uh, delay tactics uh, uh, to truncate or subvert uh, the electoral process, he said he reaffirmed Nigerians that uh, it's not going to be, of course, uh, uh, it's, it's going to be impartial and not allow anything that may jeopardize justice being served, that INEX should do whatever within their reach to make sure that those documents are available, of course, uh, to the Labour Party to facilitate uh, the entire process. Do you think that uh, uh, with such a statement coming from the judge, um, the Nigeria could have uh, and the thing, of course, to, to repose their confidence in the process. Of course, Nigerians actually, ask an average Nigerian on the street, he will tell you they have lost confidence in the Nigerian judiciary. You understand? But uh, look at the revelation of uh, Bukachua and all that. These are things that have been happening on the ground that we might not be able to see. But let me tell you, whether that statement made by the judge or whatever is real or cosmetic or political or just to appeal to, you know, just to camouflage the, the entire world, the idea for justice. We have seen such statements in the past. At the end of the day, nothing comes out of it. You understand? The, what, what gives judgment is evidence. evidence. Go anywhere in the court. If you don't have evidence, you cannot pass judgment based on uh, assumption. Judgment is passed based on uh, evidence. And the Labour Party, led by Peter Obi, has uh, produced overwhelming evidence to show that he actually won that 2023 presidential election. You understand? So, it's less for the judiciary to do the needful. And what is the needful they're going to do? They should remember that a lot of civil society organizations are watching. A lot of people
people are watching, a lot of groups are watching because we cannot afford to misrepresent our mandates. We are we, we saw what the electors did during the presidential election. Um, 95% of the electors in Nigeria voted for the Labour Party. They wanted change. Forget this uh, Rigmaro movement uh, here and there. Tunubu, they are all pretenders. Tunubu was part of APC government that brought Nigeria down. So, uh, me, I do not see anything uh, fantastic that he's doing. What I'm interested in is let there be justice so that we'll have peace. If there's no justice, there will be no peace. It's as simple as that. Nigerians are seeing it. Nigerians are witnessing and seeing the overwhelming evidence that has been tendered in that court. Let us see how they are going to compromise this this time around. Honestly, uh, this is uh, quite uh, interesting and the fireworks uh, keep on, of course, uh, building up and we hope that uh, uh, the judges, of course, will be fair to all and justice must be served in the interest of humanity uh, so that, uh, of course, uh, we will set a good precedence for uh, the next generation to follow and discourage uh, abuse of office and uh, fraudulent uh, activities uh, during the electoral process. Now, uh, moving down from there, IPOB have accused, of course, the political elites from the southeast that they are plotting, of course, uh, to arrest their key officers uh, that are in diaspora. Do you believe that such could be possible? Uh, it, 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 it just like um, they are trying to create something that is not possible. I remember what Namde Kano said about the IPOB leadership. It would take the entire security world, services, 100 and something years to break into IPOB and dismantle it. The, all the things they are saying, that's not, we are not interested. We are, what we are interested in is Namde Kano has won all his cases in the courts. Why are these governors, these politicians from the East, not asking questions? I remember what the, gov what the governor of uh, Enugu said, Mba. They should release him. He has no case with you now, with the, with the federal government. They should release him. Let the guy be free. And what he's agitating for is not a crime. It's been done only anywhere all over the world. Why is it different? Why is Nam the case, uh, case different? Why is he being still being kept in custody up to now? Those are the questions I expect the polit uh, political leaders or the governors, whoever they are, I don't fucking want to know who they are. You understand? But those are the things, those are the questions they should be asking the powers that be that has kept that innocent man incarcerated for for, for, for years, two, now. Two years now. What 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 are they talking about? You understand? But don't understand him. It's a Biafran quest. It's a it's a contest. It's a conquest. And the more they keep on doing these things, the more they are fueling the agitation to a point of no return. And indeed, uh, of course, uh, sending a signal to the Eastern people that indeed they are not protected uh, within this uh, Nigerian uh, project. And uh, I think uh, it behoves some the Nigerian government uh, uh, to adhere to the rules of law, to the fundamental, of course, rules of uh, democratic uh, uh, process. They should release Mazin than the Kano unconditionally has been, of course, uh, stated by the courts, appellate courts of law, and uh, compensating uh, duly. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you, uh, comrade, for your time, and uh, I do appreciate your contributions to this effect. This is Call Wave TV, where we continue to bring your way on various reportage of events. Uh, I hope uh, you find this interesting. I will continue to intimate to you and sensitize you on the happenings within the Nigerian, of course, uh, society. In-depth analysis of events uh, is a promise we are keeping, keeping it real as always. Please don't forget to hit the subscription button, give us a thumbs up, and we appreciate, of course, uh, your viewership. Remember, bless until the next edition.